Hello everybody, Brad Johnson here. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about ending the cycle of regret. So this is a very important video that is going to continue to bring a greater context into a lot of what I've shared in the past pertaining to resolving conflict, resolving obstructions, healing traumas. And the easiest way to put it, because con the, the idea of traumas themselves can be very complex. But the easy way I feel to put it is when we look at this word, is when we look at the nature of regret, because we can really identify that a lot more easier than the idea of, well, here's a trauma. Here's a mental trauma. Well, what do you mean? Well, here's a trauma of this or trauma of that. But yeah, but what do you mean? Right? More deeper does the nature of trauma itself uh, portray itself through us, through us. So I wanted to use the idea of regret. So when we're looking at the nature of regret, what are we talking about? I'm not looking into the idea of the, the dictionary term in regards to the nature of regret. But what is it when I say this word? When I say the nature of regret? I regret that this happened. I have this regret. I have this problem. Yes, it certainly is a problem. But I have this nature of regret. And this regret is inability to heal a problem. That's it. That is my own particular perspective in regards to the nature of a regret. Not Webster's Dictionary, okay? But through my own particular perspective, from what I have learned these past 13 plus years of working on myself and helping others to heal as well too, we notice this within ourselves, the inability to heal a problem, and that's the regret. Well, why are we unable to heal a problem? What is this inability? How do we make it an inability to heal? Because of the, well, when we look at the problem itself, when we look at the inability to heal a problem, we have that fear. We have that anger. We have that sadness. We have that guilt. We have that grief. All in all, we have suffering. And when we look at the nature of suffering altogether, it's such a powerful energetic. We don't want to look at it. We don't want to look at this because these all represent the attributes to the nature of that suffering. The fear, the anger, the sadness, the guilt, the grief, the pain, the anguish, the demise that we have. We don't want to look at that. It does not feel good. It's very painful. It just, it hurts for me to look at that because that is what my regret contains. So when we look at the nature of regret, it is the inability to heal a problem. It is the inability to heal a conflict. It is the inability to heal a trauma. Not because it's impossible to heal. It's because we have programmed ourselves to have inability. We have made ourselves unable because we're afraid of this. We're terrified of this. We are absolutely in no shape to even want to look at something like that. It's too painful. It's too intense. The suffering is just too much. I don't want to look at that. But what is it behind that fear? 
Why is it that we feel we don't want to look at that? When we look at the nature of suffering, why does suffering exist? Why is it here? Well, it's because of this. It's because of identity. We don't see ourselves past the problem. We don't see ourselves able to heal a problem. Because when we are filled with regret, when we have this, we don't feel that we are able to go past emotion. Emotion feels like it's the barrier. And our thoughts fall in line with our inability to look into this. So we become heavily emotional. We relate to all of the suffering through the nature of identity, and our thoughts reinforce that. Our thoughts reinforce the pain of the identity surrounding suffering, which gives us this regret, the inability to heal the problem, because we cannot see past the problem. The emotion here that is the gate that keeps all this pain and suffering locked in. Here you are, behind the bars, behind that gate. We do not feel that we are able to resolve the problem because we are the problem. The problem is me. When I say me, that goes right to the identity. The problem is me. And I cannot see past my emotions. I cannot get past these thoughts. Because I cannot get past these, I have a problem. No, you don't have a problem. You are the problem. You have identified yourself as the problem. So there's a saying that I'm using, and it is, you cannot resolve a problem by being a problem. Okay? You cannot resolve your problems when you yourself are the problem. That's the problem. And that's what regret represents. The inability to heal a problem because I am the problem. And that problem is the identity. It is the identity that is built through the nature of suffering to our emotions go out of control. They start to run rampant. The thoughts, again, just reinforce the nature of the emotions that I'm facing. And the problem is me because I'm the one behind these bars. I'm the one behind this gate and I cannot leave. I'm locking myself in. So here we are with regret. But how do we end the cycle of regret? How do we end this regretfulness altogether? When we have to understand that the nature of regret is simply that which is self-created, it is self-identified, our emotions are basically the shackle where regret holds on to us, it's the handcuff. It's the handcuff, it's the ankle bracelet, it's the ankle weight. And it's all of these regrets that we have. I regret not being able to be there for a friend when that friend passed away because I was busy doing something else. Well, there's guilt, right? There's guilt, there's sadness. I regret that I wasn't able to really take advantage of my situation in life where I could have really excelled in this career. I really could have made it to the top, but I was afraid, and there's that fear. This is what the regret is telling us. Because we have an inability to heal a problem, we want to try and create change through the mind.
And this is where we get stuck. I regret not being able to do this and oh, I wish I could have done that. Oh, I wish I could have done that. Not a single day goes by where I wish I could have changed that. And because the way that this is, God, I regret it so much. I regret that problem so much. I regret that whole situation so much. All I'm doing is regretting, regretting, regretting the inability to heal a problem. So instead of being able to heal a problem, I'll try to change it through the mind. I'll reminisce about the problem. I'll keep bringing it up. I'll keep talking about it. I'll just keep wishing and wishing and intending that I'm going to change this problem, but I know I can't. And you're right about that. You cannot change an experience that has already happened to you. And that is the first thing that you have to realize. You cannot change. You cannot change the event that surrounds the regret. Okay? If you're at a funeral and maybe a parent died, your aunt died, your uncle died, whatever it may be, you're at that funeral and you're just bawling your eyes out because you could have, you just wish that you could have changed something. So this did not have to happen. Why did that person have to die? Why couldn't I have been there? Why couldn't I have helped them out more? Why couldn't I have figured out that that's what they needed? And if I knew that that's what they needed, I could have saved them. There's regret speaking. The inability to heal a problem is the very nature of regret. Because we want to change. We want to change it all. And that's what tortures you. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, lifetime after lifetime. That regret that you hold within yourself, that needing, that wanting, that great desire to change, tortures you. And that's the suffering. And that's what we hold on to. We hold on to the regret. We hold on to try and thinking that we could wish it away. That we're just living in that event over and over again like a hamster running a wheel. And when does it end? As long as you try to solve this with your emotional, rational, logical, intellectual mind, you will be stuck with this. For the rest of your life, lifetime after lifetime, because you're trying to rely on logic. You're trying to rely on rationality. You're trying to rely on the intellect. Just playing it again and again in your mind, looking at a thousand different scenarios about what you could have done better, but it does not matter if you came up with a million scenarios, the result is the same doesn't matter. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. You are draining yourself. And it is because of this regret that we make ourselves sick. This is how disease stems. Because through regret, we have conflict. Through regret, we have traumas. Through regret, we have obstructions. Through regret, we have blockages. Through regret, we have chronic conditions. Because that's what regret does. It is stressful. It is about stress. It is tension. It is pressure. Because our mind is in agony, because we cannot see past the problem, because we are the problem. So we're getting an idea here. As long as I continue to live in regret, I'm going to be stressed out. My body is going to get sick. And through that stress comes all this tension. Through this tension is all this pressure, because I cannot find harmony. 
I can't find it. No matter how many scenarios I run through in my mind, no matter how many times I wish I could see this change differently, I can't do it. I can't bust through this wall that I've erected. I can't kick through that gate that I've erected in my life. And that's the problem. That's why regrets continue. So, when are you going to let go of this? When are you going to let go of your logic, your rationality, and your intellectualism? Because you realize that that cannot bring this. It cannot bring change. And it cannot do this. It cannot heal you. It fuels the problem. It continues to make this problem unable. It is an inability to heal the problem. I am unable to heal the problem because I keep relying on these things. So what do we do? How do we end the cycle of regret? Well, here's what we do. We look at our regret. We see it within our mind. We're constantly playing it out. And in order for us to completely end the cycle of regret, we have to learn to release. We have to learn to soften. We have to learn to forgive. We have to release those very things within ourselves that we have constantly put our fear, our suffering into. That intellect that continues to circle around again and again, making the whole situation worse. We have to learn to release. We have to learn to soften. We have to learn to forgive. We have to give up the ability to identify. So it is no longer about the nature of identity. We are not identifying with our pain. That has to be given up. Your ability to identify, your ability to see yourself as a person, your ability to see yourself as the problem is the very problem why you cannot resolve your regret. Your regret continues to spiral out of control because you continue to identify with it. You identify with your problem. And you have not even bothered to work with this. Okay? This is not something new I'm talking about. But this is giving you a deeper perspective about why regrets are still existing within you. Because you do this. You identify. And you do not do this. That's your way out. That's your ability to dissolve the regret and the regrets altogether is to release, is to soften, is to forgive. That we have to give up the idea of seeing ourselves as a wounded person. We have to give up the idea of identification. Because you do not see the true you. You do not see your heart. You do not see your soul. You do not see your spirit. You do not see who you truly are. You just see yourself in this physical body, with this physical personhood that you've created. It's all your invention. Everything that represents this is yours, that you've identified with, that you've played around with. You're in a trance. And we have to learn to break that trance. So Brad, what's one of the best ways that we can do that? BCR technique. 
because that's what it does. It helps you to no longer feel an inability, but an ability to heal a problem. So we have got rid of the I, and we have brought forward an ability. An ability to heal a problem. Because we have chosen to become compassionate. We have chosen to release. We have chosen to soften. We have chosen to forgive. And we are relaxing this. We are relaxing the ability to identify. The regrets have to go. If you truly wish to be free in life, you're not going to be free by in regards to what happens to world events, current events. That's not going to bring you freedom about things going your way in life, that it's all under your control completely and that everybody else has to fall in line because it's what you want. That's nothing but identity. That's nothing but ignorance. And that's nothing but arrogance. That's the identify, identification program. That's identity. I just want the world to be exactly the way that I want it so that everybody can fall in line so that I can get what I want. Selfishness, ignorance, arrogance. You have to let go of this. You have to let go of the ability to identify because your ability to identify is giving you the inability to heal a problem. And that problem is the regret. So we need to look at the situation and we accept it completely as it is. And that's when we go into the earlier step, even before release, the hidden step right here is to accept. We have to accept what has been given to us through experience. That you cannot change the hand of destiny from what it brought you through the nature of experience. When a loved one has transcended this world, first of all, there is no death. That's the most important thing for you to realize. Everyone is soul. Everyone is spirit. Everyone is eternal. Everyone is immortal. That's the truth. That's not uh, fiction. That's not a fantasy. That's not a theory. That's not a philosophy. That's the truth. You exist eternally. And all that is soul exists eternally. But looking even beyond that, when you say, oh, I regret so much that this person has died because I didn't feel this or I wasn't here, whatever it was. That's you again playing with this, going around and around and around and around and around. So what I tell people is you have to accept what's happened. Right, I can't. It's so painful. You have to accept what's happened. You have to accept what's happened. You have to accept what has been experienced through you. You can't change it. You cannot change what has happened through your experience. Cannot be done. That's what you have to firstly accept. I have to accept that I cannot change what has been given to me. Those are the cards that have been dealt. Those are the stars that have been aligned. That is the straw that I have drawn. I have this experience. I went through this event. Can't deny that. You have to accept it. And when you finally accept it, even though you may be the most stubborn person on the face of the planet, at some point you will now accept it. I accept that this has happened. Right? And that takes strength. That takes courage. It really does. When you say, I accept this, that requires humility. You have to be humble. 
about being able to accept the problem that you know through the experience you are not able to change. You cannot just put another experience in its place. But here's what we can do. When we look at an experience, or in this case, I'll simply refer to it as an event. When we have an event in our life, when we have that experience, like I said, you cannot change the experience to which that event is shrouded within. But what you can do is change your perception of things. You can change your perception of things because if you couldn't, there is no way that we could ever heal a fragile experience. So you cannot change the experience, you cannot change the event, but you can change the way you feel about it. You can change your perception. And it's very simple to do that. As long as we decide to make it easy. Here's the event. And here's your cords representing the pain, the suffering, the anguish, the despair, the regret. All of these cords are all around it because that is what you are emotionally assigning to the event, the event that exists within the experience. So rather than having all of these destructive cords, we cut, 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 we cut. Because we've done this. We've been able to accept. We've been able to accept the way things have happened. We've been able to accept the way the event came to us. And so now that I can accept that, I can release, I can cut away these cords. The pain, the agony, the suffering, the demise, the regret. I can cut those away because I've accepted. And now I can release. And now that I've cut those cords, I can go easy on myself. I can soften myself. This is where BCR technique comes in. I start to raise myself up. I start to feel at ease with myself. I'm no longer blaming myself anymore. I'm no longer criticizing, ridiculing myself anymore because I have now started a path to give up on the identification on the experiences that I have been dealt. I cannot change the hand of destiny. I cannot change the stars aligning. I cannot change the cards that have been given to me. I cannot change the straw that I have drawn. I cannot change that experience. I cannot change that event, but I can change the way I feel about it. And my goal is to let it go. My goal is to completely release it entirely. And I have to soften myself. I have to be easy on myself. I need to move myself into that calmness. And the breath can help me with that. So that I can do this. So that I can forgive it. But in order for me to forgive it, in order for me to completely be free of this, uh, this here, has to be completely gone. I no longer identify with this event, because if I identify with the event, I'm assigning emotions to it. That's being backed up by my thoughts, reinforced by my thoughts. What happens when I drop this? What happens when I drop identity? When I drop the identity, I'm free. There are no cords that are wrapped around this event, this circle is the event. And all of these cords have represented my emotional attachments of identity. Every single thing that I can think of, my anger, my sadness, my fear, my guilt, my grief, my suffering, all of it came through here. And that is why a regret exists. The inability to heal a problem. 
But when we now are able to heal the regret, it's because we have an ability to heal a problem. And so we go into BCR, we lift ourselves up, we start to feel this reinforcement. This reinforcement comes into ourselves. We're feeling that light, that light is touching us. It's at the end of the tunnel. And all I have to do is walk forward. And if I can walk forward towards that light, everything gets softer. I'm taking something that was a boulder and I'm turning it into a feather because I'm softening myself. I'm lightening myself up. I'm going easy on myself. I'm calming myself down. I'm making the journey easier. I'm no longer trudging through the mud. I'm walking firmly on solid ground. I'm no longer carrying thousands of pounds of weight on my shoulder. I'm dropping it all and I feel lighter than a feather because I'm moving forward to the light. And I did that because I've accepted the way things are with that event. That took courage, that took strength for me to do that. That took humility, but I did it. I was able to release the cords, cut them away, and being able to take down that identification program. I'm able to soften myself through reinforcement, through the BCR technique, and now I'm able to forgive the entire situation. I have to live with that experience. I have to live with the idea that I have lost a loved one. But I'm at peace with it now. How am I at peace with it? Because I've no longer choose to identify it. Because I realize we are eternal. We are infinite. We will always exist. I've been able to see myself past the emotion. I've been able to see all of this past the problem. I've been able to see beyond my regret. Now you understand. That's what it takes. The ability to accept things as they are. Because it takes so much of an effort. It takes so much of your energy to do this. So that you have this. And you have this. That takes an incredible amount of energy. That drains you. That's what gives you illness. That's what gives you disease. All diseases are psychically applied to you. Every single one of them. All diseases are psychic in nature. Okay, it's not germ theory. It's that psychic energy. It's that sympathetic resonance. That's what's making you sick. Diabetes, psychic disorder. Cancer, psychic disorder. Schizophrenia, psychic disorder. Alzheimer's, psychic disorder. Dementia, psychic disorder. Heart disease, psychic disorder. Any of these particular forms of diseases all caused through the psychic disorder because of that stress and that tension. The stress comes in because of that tension, because of that pressure, because we are completely out of harmony with ourselves. That impacts the body. Your body is a living intelligence. Everything within it is living intelligent design. And within the body, is the true divine intelligence of you. So you as the intelligence are operating this intelligent instrument. And when your intelligence is faulty, because you identify with everything, well, your organs get messed up. The glandular system gets messed up. The lymphatic system gets messed up. The digestive system gets messed up. Everything within our body starts to get messed up. Because everything within our body represents quadrants or octaves. 
pertaining to a certain signature of how we identify with problems. When it is in harmony, there are no emotional problems. There's no emotional issues. There is no stress. There is no tension. There is no pressure. The psychic channels are clean because you're clean. Because you are functioning as your true intelligence. You are not functioning under an identity intelligence. An identity program. So this is why you're sick. It is psychic disorder. Mainstream science doesn't even know this yet. But the ancients know this. This is in yogic science. This is in Chinese medicine. This is in the ancient systems. They knew this. Medical science today doesn't know it at all. They don't have a clue. They still think you catch germs from the outside and it wreaks havoc with the inside. It's absolute stupidity. Because that's not how it works. That would be you just looking at this body as a machine and you as some type of soulless, soulless entity, soulless contraption. And if that was the case, then maybe there would be the idea of germ theory actually being a thing. But it's not a thing. It's bunk. It's a bunch of garbage. What is true is psychic disorder through the sympathetic resonance of how we identify with our problems how we stress ourselves out, how that tension just builds up on that pressure throughout our body so our life force energy can't flow properly. In yoga tradition, there are 72,000 nadi channels, like energetic veins that flow through the body. And what causes those veins to clog, to be blocked? Our emotions, our disharmony, our out-of-touch nature with the true intelligence to which we are. This intelligent design body now goes through great periods of suffering. And it's telling you that it has to lock down certain things because you are constantly in a state of suffering in a variety of different ways. And so there's lockdowns. And that's why there's diseases. That's why there's illnesses, because there's lockdowns. Your body locks itself down to try and contain that and to try and get the bodily resources to come in and try to repair it. But it's getting overwhelmed because you're getting more freaked out about everything else. Regret after regret after regret after regret after regret. It gets worse and the body becomes overwhelmed and saying, come on. You know, the, the, the dear soul in this body has to clue in. We're trying to tell you, you're being sick. You're going to give yourself diabetes. You're going to give yourself cancer. You're going to give yourself glaucoma. You're going to give yourself schizophrenia. You're going to give yourself autism. You're going to give yourself heart disease. Because these are all the things that are locking down. The body is locking down. The immune system is failing. All of this bacteria, all of these pathogens, all of these invaders inside the body are coming online because the body is no longer to hold those forms of bacterium within the body at bay. And so havoc gets unleashed. And that's what happens with through regret. Through regret, we get that suffering and that suffering is the true virus of the body. Everything that you have been experiencing in this life that pertains to suffering, that's the true illness. That's the true virus. Suffering is the virus. Your fear, your anger, your sadness, your grief, your guilt, it's all part of the virus. That's why you're sick. That's why you're ill. That's why your body is filled with discrepancies. Because of this. So Brad, what happens when we clear all this out? What happens when we go through our timeline and we look at our regrets, we're able to accept them, to release the cords, 
to soften everything up, going into BCR technique, and now bringing ourselves the ability to forgive that and saying, I'm ready to completely let this go. Because when I'm here, when I'm at the ability to forgive, I have completely let go. The problem has been healed because I've been able to completely let it go. I have been able to completely purge it. I no longer identify with it. So what happens? Here I am doing the forgiveness work. Here I am letting it go. Now the body can replenish itself. The body can now naturally heal itself because all of the lockdowns of the psychic channels are now opened up again. It's like the floodgates are opening up. And now the prana runs through the body. Same thing in regards to our spine. Our spine is such a complex system. It runs in different degrees of energy. It is a living intelligence. It is an antenna. And we want to make sure we're taking good care of that antenna. We want to make sure that we're taking good care of this body all together so that we can open up the psychic channels so that prana can now flow through the 72,000 nadis, the energetic veins, the energetic nervous system. And now life is flowing through us in harmony through this intelligently designed instrument where us says the intelligence is leading the way. You'll never get sick again. You will never get sick again when you resolve all of those regrets. When you clear away your traumas, when you clear away your conflicts, when you clear away your obstructions, when you clear away your dilemmas, you'll never get sick again. This has been my journey for the past four years. Last time I got sick was in 2017 while I was in Mexico. Since then, never been ill. 2017 in Mexico, that's when I was going through a very heartbreaking breakup. So I still had quite a lot of emotional stress upon myself. And I had to spend those several months after the breakup to heal it all. And after that point, I never got sick again have not been sick since 2017 in Mexico. And here I am in 2022, five years, not a single sickness, because I took my healing to the next level. I took it to the greater depth where I looked at these regrets, I looked through my timeline, I cleared every single one of them and saying, I'm no longer going to give power to identity. I am now going to accept everything that's happened and I'm going to lighten my perspective on the event. I lighten it up. So how do I lighten up? Well, firstly, I've accepted that I'm able to release all the emotional cords. And I'm able to soften myself. At the time, it was EQ method. EQ method was basically the entire full version of the healing. BCR technique was a miniature version of the old EQ method. And that's what I kept doing. I soften myself up and I ask myself, am I able to forgive this? Am I able to forgive my identity pertaining to this event? Yes. Clear it out completely. Surrender it to God. Surrender it to God. Surrender it to God. Surrender it to the divine. Surrender it to spirit. I'm ready to let it go. I no longer hold on to any identity because it's useless. Yes. And it's like the trumpets of heaven are playing because you get it. Identity is useless. It's a sabotage. It's a mind trap. Your true identity is the soul. It's not this body. This body is named Brad. That's it. There truly is no Brad. There truly is no you with your identity. You are soul. You are spirit. You are consciousness. You are infinite intelligence. You are God consciousness. That is your nature. And when you know this, regret goes. And now you have an ability to heal a problem because you are no longer the problem. Right? So 
We know that we cannot heal a problem by being a problem. We can now heal the problem because we are now the solution. And we're the solution because we give up this. We give up the identity. We clean the psychic channels. We are no longer under psychic disorder because psychic disorder takes a bit of time. It takes a couple of years. It's quite commonly what we refer to as chronic conditions. It doesn't happen just like that. It takes its time. It's like the idea that if we're using the analogy that bread isn't going to mold within one day. It's going to take time. Or our body is going to mold. Our body is going to go into atrophy over time, usually within a couple of years, depending upon the stress levels of a person. So that is where we get psychic disorder, because we continue to reinforce the pain protocol. We reinforce the pain identity. And this is what's shriveling everything else up. This is what's causing such a dilemma because the life force energy cannot reach that particular nadi, and so there's a lockdown. And the body is responding to an emergency. That's how we're sick, guys. Everything, every disorder that you can find through the medical books or anything of that nature, all of it's caused by psychic disorder. All of it's caused by the mind. All of it is caused by mind problems. The psyche of the mind is in disarray because you are completely consumed by regret. That's why you're sick. No matter what it is, minute to major, it's all just the aspects of psychic disorder. Sympathetic resonance. I sympathize with my problem. I sympathize with my identity. I sympathize with all of these problems, all of this chaos. And that's why I'm sick. But now we know how to let it go. How to move into that stage where we let it go and we're free. We're now free of that regret. And then we continue. We look at all the regrets, as many as we can recall. Because believe me, these things that you may not recall will come to you at some point. I've likened it to the idea of doing a pile of laundry. We start off at the top of the pile. We're starting to clean off all these clothes. And as we continue to work with cleaning the pile, we look at this bottom and we see clothes we didn't even know we had. And that can relate to memory. It's the same thing with you. You will have a pile here, right? And you're just basically tackling the top of the pile. And you take care of that. You start talk, tap, uh, tackling the middle of the pile. You take care of that. And there's all this excess. All this excess at the very bottom. You didn't even know was there. But I had to take care of this pile and this pile for me to realize what was there. And in a lot of that is things we didn't even know still existed. We've buried it. It comes back. It certainly will come back because I am in the vibration to resolve my regrets. And it will come back. And so those memories will return. Even if you think you have the worst memory in the universe, it will return. It will come to you. It will strike a chord. It will come through meditation. It will come through dreams. It will just come through you doing something in the awoken state. And just suddenly, boof, suddenly, all of a sudden, poof, it clicks to you. So everybody, this is how we end the cycle of regret. We start off with these. You have to learn to accept. This is what the yogis will teach. Yogis will teach you first and foremost, you cannot change that event that you identify with. You have to accept it as it is. Accept it for what it is. And then when you accept it for what it is, you can now start to release all the emotions that surround it. You can now soften yourself. You can now forgive it. You can now let it go. Everything from what I've taught you guys from BCR Technique, 30-day challenge. It's all here. 
That is why this technique is so powerful. That's why I'm offering it to you guys for free. Because we as human beings need something like that. So, end the cycle of your regrets. No longer chase the wheel. No longer identify. And start that first step. That very first step, which is about acceptance. Going all the way down to letting it go and being free. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll speak to you again in another perspective of the now. Take care. Thank you very much for checking out the New Earth Teachings YouTube channel. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And you can check out the websites, newearthteachings.com, where you can order a private session, three questions by email, EQ method, and a lot more. And you can also check out healingcodecards.com, where you can grab your mind deck, your body deck, and of course the brand new Body Deck Special Edition. All of these are available in digital editions as well. And you can also get a shirt just like this through HealingCodeShop.com where you can experience the healing codes in apparel form. So feel free to check out these websites. Thank you so much and I'll speak to you again in the next video. Be well.